स्त्रास ऑफ आ डिवाइन मदर आ डिवाइन मदर सेज द वर्ल्ड इज फाइटिंग फॉर इट्स स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ मैन एस बाय द रश ऑफ हॉस्टाइल एंड अनडिवाइन फोर्सेस लॉर्ड वी एज पार टू बी थाई वेलियंट वॉरियर्स सो दैट थाई ग्लोरी मे मैनिफेस्ट अपॉन द अर्थ glory to the o lord conqueror of every foe give us the power to endure and share in thy victory the hour has come when a choice has to be made radical and definitive lord give us the strength to reject falsehood and emerge in thy truth pure and worthy of thy victory with my blessing says our divine mother words of shri aurobindo from the book letters on yoga top basic requisites of the path topic the foundation of sadhana Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, "It is not possible to make a foundation in the yoga if the mind is restless. The first thing needed is quiet in the mind. Also, to merge the personal consciousness is not the first aim of yoga. The first aim is to open it to a higher spiritual consciousness, and for this also a quiet mind is the first need." Allah Shri Aurobindo says the first thing to do in the sadhana is to get a settled peace and silence in the mind otherwise you may have experiences but nothing will be permanent it is in the silent mind that the true consciousness can be built a quiet mind does not mean that there will be no thoughts or mental movements at all but that these will be on the surface and you will feel your true being within separate from them observing but not getting carried away able to watch and judge them and reject all that has to be rejected and to accept and to keep to all that is true consciousness and true experience our lord shri aurobindo says passivity of the mind is good but take care to be passive only to the truth and to the touch of the divine shakti if you are passive to the suggestions and influences of the lower nature you will not be able to progress or else you will expose yourself to adverse forces which may take you away from the true path of yoga aspire to the mother for this settled quietness and calm of the mind and this constant sense of the inner being in you standing back from the external nature and turn to the light and true the forces that stand in the way of the sadhana are the forces of the lower mental vital and physical nature behind them are adverse powers of the mental vital and subtle physical worlds these can be dealt with only after the mind and heart have become one pointed and concentrated in the single aspiration Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says the first step is a quiet mind. Silence is a further step, but quietude must be there. And by a quiet mind, I mean a mental consciousness within, which sees thoughts arrive to it and move about, but does not itself feel that it is thinking or identifying itself with the thoughts or call them its own. Thoughts, mental movements may pass through. it as wayfarers appear and pass from elsewhere through a silent country the quiet mind observes them or it does not care to observe them but in either case does not become active or lose its quietude silence is more than quietude it can be gained by banishing thought altogether from the inner mind 
keeping it voiceless or quiet outside but more easily it is established by a descent from above one feels it coming down entering and occupying or surrounding the personal consciousness which tends to merge itself in the vast impersonal silence our lord shri aurobindo says to quiet the mind in such a way that no thoughts will come is not so easy and usually takes time the most necessary thing is to feel a quietude in the mind so that if thoughts come do not disturb or hold the mind or make it follow them but simply cross and pass away the mind first becomes the witness of the passage of thought not the thinker afterwards it is able not to watch the thoughts but lets them pass unnoticed and concentrates in itself or on the object it chooses without trouble Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says there are two main things to be secured as foundations of the sadhana the opening of the psychic being and the realization of the self above for the opening of the psychic being concentration on the mother and self offering to her are the direct way the growth of bhakti which you feel is the first sign of the psychic development a sense of the mother's presence or force or the remembrance of her supporting and strengthening you is the next sign eventually the soul within begins to be active in aspiration and psychic perception guiding the mind to the right thoughts the vital to the right moments and feelings showing and rejecting all that has to be put away turning the whole being in all its moments to the divine alone for the self realization and peace and silence of the mind are the first conditions afterwards one begins to feel freedom release whiteness to live in a consciousness silent tranquil untouched by any or all things existing everywhere and in all one with or united with the divine other experiences come on the way or may come such as the opening of the inner vision the sense of force working within and various moments and phenomena of the working etc one may also be conscious of the essence of the consciousness and descents of force peace bliss or light from above a large word in this sense silence is always good but i do not mean by quietness of mind entire silence i mean a mind free from disturbance and trouble study light and glad so as to open to the force that will change the nature the important thing is to get rid of the habit of invasion of troubling thoughts wrong feelings confusion of ideas unhappy moments these disturb the nature and cloud it 
and make it difficult for the force to work. When the mind is quiet and at peace, the force can work more easily. It should be possible to see things that have to be changed in you without being upset or depressed. The change is more easily done. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says the difference between a vacant mind and a calm mind is that when the mind is vacant, there is no thought, no conception, no mental action of any kind except an essential perception of things without the formed idea. In her spirit upward hoped, a woman sat in gold and purple sheets. Armed with the titan and the thunderbolt, her feet upon a couch of drowned bed. But in the calm mind, it is the substance of the mental being that is still, so still that nothing disturbs it. If thoughts or activities come, they do not rise at all out of the mind, but they come from outside and cross the mind as flights of birds crosses the sky in a windless air. It passes, disturbs nothing, leaving no trace. Even if a thousand images or most violent events pass across it, the calm stillness remains as if the very texture of the mind were a substance of the eternal and indestructible peace. A mind that has achieved this calm can begin to act even intensively and powerfully, but it will be it will keep its fundamental stillness originating nothing from itself but receiving from above from the divine and giving it a mental form without adding anything of its own calmly, dispassionately, thought with though with joy, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. These are the words of our Lord Sri Aurobindo.